to human resources at work about being transgender and saying that I wanted to transfer schools because I didn't want to transition on the job at the school I'm at. Um, I went into great detail about that in the last video, but I'll just say like it's not a good idea in the place I'm working at. So I went to human resources and uh, told them that I wanted to transfer, and they were fine with that. They were cool with it. But then the next day, I guess, they talked to my husband at work, and he works for the same school district principal of another school, and I found out later that after I left, they had like three meetings. And one one was with the superintendent of schools, and one was with their lawyers, so that kind of freaked my husband out. Freaked me out, too, actually. Um, so that was the start of things. And so uh, yeah, my husband wasn't really too happy with me for that. But, you know, it'll work out, I guess. terrible weekend because we weren't, my husband said I needed to slow down or it was going to cost us our relationship, so Saturday I was not broke most of the day, but we went out Saturday night, got a babysitter, I had a great night, I'm a little self-conscious because my son's over there watching me, actually he's not, he's texting somebody, but, <laughs> uh, Sunday, um, we went down to visit my husband's aunt, and she doesn't know about Brooke, and she's too sick to deal with it, so I had to be not Brooke all day Sunday, too. It was really hard for me, and of course it worked, I'm not, not Brooke, and that's also hard for me because I've been Brooke pretty much every day for the last 20 days, and, and it's just the greatest feeling ever, and it makes me not want to be the other person ever again. <laughs> and that's very hard for my husband to deal with. Um, I've totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so I've been dealing with that at work for the last week and dealing with basically it's getting the whole school district pretty much knows about Brooke now, which is fine, I wanted that, but it's a little awkward too. Um, I went to therapy Tuesday, yesterday, and I got there early, I got there about 45 minutes early, and I thought, perfect time to walk around town is Brooke and get some more Brooke time, and it's a super liberal college town, so I thought everything would be great. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon, quarter after 2. Um, I went in, got some coffee, and chatted with the girls behind the counter, and they were very nice, and, and didn't bat an eye, so I'm feeling really confident, walking with my coffee, and I walk down the street where all these bars are, and at night the street gets pretty rough, but I figure 2.30 in the afternoon, it shouldn't be too bad, and there was crowds of people, but I walked through them, no problem, but I approached this group of six guys, and I know enough about reading people that these guys are trouble. But they've already spotted me and I can't turn around because that would be showing weakness. So I just walk towards them and the biggest, mouthiest one of them is just staring at me. And I had sunglasses on, so but I'm just walking forward. And as I draw a level with him, he goes, good morning, sir. And I could tell it was deliberate. And I'm just like, fuck, no, you didn't. But I'm ignoring it. I didn't look at him. I didn't break stride. I just kept walking. I get a, a few steps past him, he goes, good morning, sir, like again, and I was instantaneously pissed off, so without even thinking about it, I just flipped him off and kept on walking, but it scared me, because I'm thinking, you know, at any minute, I could have six guys chasing me, but it was this middle of the day, and it was crowded, so they didn't, but that pretty much destroyed my confidence there. Um, but then I had therapy right after that, and my therapist said, oh, I'm really sorry that happened to you. But then we talked about other things, so. But the whole way home, I'm thinking, like, I need a gun or something, you know, something in case this happens again. It just, it really shattered my confidence badly. And, uh, uh that night we had to get a pizza. We, I ordered a pizza, and I was going to make my husband go get it, but I made myself go get it, specifically as a reaction to them. Like, I have to go back out in public again, this Brooke, and face it, you know, or else 
it could shatter my confidence forever. Well, not forever, but for a long time. And it still has shattered my confidence quite a bit. But I went into Pizza Hut. It was very crowded in there. I went in and picked up my pizza, and the girl behind the counter was nice. And I chatted with her, you know, made small talk. And she said, here's your pizza, Brooke, because I changed my name with Pizza Hut so that when my phone number's up, they don't ask for my old name, they ask for Brooke. Then I came home, ate pizza, and then my son drops in. <laughs> Uh, he told me he was coming, but I forgot. I totally forgot. And I didn't warn him about that I'm Brooke full-time most of the time now. And he brings his two friends from high school. And they have no idea, because he hasn't told them anything. And I'm just like, oh, hi. <laughs> but I was I was doing something, and I just kind of kept doing what I was doing. Um, and then uh, one of them said something about, how much things have changed around here. He was talking about the house because he hasn't been here in a while. And I said, oh yeah, just a few things. And they kind of paused for a second. And then they laughed. And then it was fine from that from that point on. We sat around the table, the dining room table, laughing and joking about my son's adventures in Portland. And <laughs> they were totally cool. And it was no problem at all. Um, but, uh, Anyway, I asked my son if he would be willing to talk a little bit about what it's like to have a transgender parent. He said, sure, but I have no idea what I'm going to say, and I'm bad at communicating. So, And now he's even more nervous. <laughs> but anyway, this is my son. He's 20. He'll be 21 in February. And uh, I'm his transgender parent. Hey, uh, my name's Killian here. Um, I am Brooke's son. Um, this is actually the first time I've ever YouTube vlogged, even, I guess you would call it. So, this is new for me in many different ways. Um, I don't even sing out in public, so this is uh, definitely new. Um, what it's like having a transgender parent. I can't say I've really experienced this before. This is definitely another first for me, so. I must say, I can remember back probably around 6th grade when my first time I heard, I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this, I guess, well I know where I'm going with this, like I said, he warned you I'm bad at communicating. 6th um, grade, I remember just getting this letter where my dad was explaining to me that he wasn't like most dads. and. I just remember I didn't quite understand it until I came back out the following summer and then it kind of all fell into place and it was kind of like, whoa. But I can honestly say that it didn't really affect my relationship with my dad and he's still my dad and obviously, you know, he'd come out and it, I don't know, he's still my dad so, I don't know, we kind of maintain the same relationship and just recently, um, I got a call, and he was just like, hey, I have some really exciting news for you. I was like, awesome, I love exciting news, like, you know, especially from my dad, because, I don't know, he's had exciting news before, but not every day does your dad call you up and be like, I have exciting news, so I was pretty anxious to hear this exciting news. So finally I get to a point where I can talk, and we can talk, and he tells me that he's on his way to transitioning, and it kind of hit me, but at the same time, it, it I didn't, I kind of, I, I don't want to say I saw it coming, but it made sense. It made sense, like, completely. Like, I was just like, and just like looking back to all our little quarrels in high school, and just like, all the times we butted heads, and just the little things, and just looking back and thinking about it, I was like, it all makes sense, you know, like, and I realized that I don't know, after he explained it to me, I was like, that's really who she is, that's, I don't know, and it's a, it's an amazing thing, and I'm, like, really fortunate to be a part of someone who, I don't know, has allowed themselves to be reborn into the world, I guess you could say, just because some people can go their whole lives with never really knowing who they are, and she's found herself, you know, and it's, it's awesome, it's really cool, and... I think that everybody should, I don't know, kind of
of take time to think about who they really are and I don't really know where I'm going with that either. I mean, just kind of find yourself and just learn who you are one way or another and don't be afraid to be who you are, I guess. I mean, I don't really know what else I have to say. You know. So, uh, any, any questions for me? That you